Hello and welcome back guys. Another episode of Coffee with Vixen. This past week has been kind of crazy for me, so I'm sorry that there hasn't been as many um, videos uploaded as what I have been uploading. Um, I have a box city starting to form in the living room because I'm getting ready for my move to Arkansas. You can actually, uh, yeah. That, that's the beginning of my box city, and that's, um, that's not even most of my stuff either. I have a lot more stuff out on the back porch, which you can kind of see um, boxes and stuff behind me in the window. Anyway, Monday was also my graduation. I am, an, I am officially a college graduate with my associate's degree in elementary education. Woohoo! Um, anyway. Let's get to why we all watch these videos. Um, San Diego mayor apparently is now urging jurors to ignore federal marijuana laws. Um, the mayor of San Diego is actually encouraging jurors of an upcoming medical marijuana case to reject the prosecution's argument, which re, um, rests on the whole fact that marijuana is banned at the federal level. The feds actually arrested somebody named Ronnie Chang of San Marcos in 2009 for operating a medical marijuana dispensary. He's just one of the many Californians who have faced legal consequences for their state sanctioned efforts to try and bring relief to patients. Um, if you're not aware, medical marijuana is used for a very wide variety of different reasons from treating PTSD and epilepsy to managing pain um, and it's, it's extremely beneficial to those who use it. It's even been used to help, um, help treat HIV and AIDS patients as well as cancer patients. In other news, Monsanto was found guilty of chemical poisoning in a landmark case in France. Um, a French farmer who can no longer perform his routine farming duties because of permanent pesticide injuries has had his day in court. Um, and the perpetrator, which of course is Monsanto, was found guilty of chemical poisoning. The French court in Lyon uh, ruled that Monsanto's lasso weed killer formula, which contains the active ingredient alichlor, uh, caused Paul Francois to develop lifelong neurological damage that manifests as persistent memory loss, headaches, and stuttering during speech. Now, if you think about this, if that's just one of their weed killing products, what else does Monsanto put out that very well could be affecting you or affecting your children later in life? You know, these are things that we really do need to contemplate. Um, in other news, Oklahoma Senate voted to defund Planned Parenthood two days after the tornado that, that struck. Um, and it was terrible, too, because it, the vote was actually 33 to 8. So it passed. Um, Absolutely terrible. And this is this is what pisses me off the most. This is some sneaky shit. Um, the state Senate was able to pass the bill somewhat under the radar because it wasn't even posted on Wednesday's legislative agenda when they this thing was voted on. So, yeah, anyway, Planned Parenthood um, operates five clinics in Oklahoma and actually serves about 8,400 men and women um, each year there. A family planning provider was uh, the family planning provider was face um, has faced scrutiny from Republicans in the past years because it provides abortions. Now, I love Planned Parenthood. I've gotten some of the best care from Planned Parenthood. I do happen to know that you cannot you cannot use public funding for the abortion services that are, that are provided by Planned Parenthood, that stuff is actually paid out of pocket, okay? So there is no public funding for the abortion services whatsoever. That's strictly money that they take in for the service, um, the services of other things. 
with that particular topic, um, <clears throat> eight men consider uh, the House bill to uh, a House bill to restrict women's reproductive rights. This committee is eight men and no women. Um, and an all male panel of House lawmakers are considering a bill today on Thursday that would ban abortions after 20 weeks of pregnancy across the United States without exceptions for rape, incest, or health of the mother. The House um, Judiciary Subcommittee on the Constitution led the bill led by the bill's sponsor, Representative Trent Franks, a Republican from Arkansas, no less, which has some of the most stupidest things concerning laws. Um, the subcommittee has no female representation whatsoever. Franks said that he hopes that President Barack Obama will stand up for fetuses in the same way he stands up for the nation's poor and sick. He is their president, and they need him so badly, Franks said. But of course, you know, we have to toss in a uh, Democrat's perspective, and that is Representative Jerry Nadler, a Democrat from New York, who fired back, I hope as my colleagues express, express such concern for fetuses today that they will also show concern for women's health. This makes no sense to me whatsoever. These are the Republicans that are, that are lawmakers are claiming that they're pro-life but yet they vote for wars, they vote for snap cuts, uh, they vote for Medicaid and Medicare cuts and everything else. But you're, you're so pro-life, you're, you're more concerned about a fetus that's not born yet, that, that doesn't have any conscious thought, than the people that you're sending to go die in the first place. And it, it, stuff like that just really kind of plucks my nerves when they start doing stupid crap like that. Um, and it just... I don't, I don't know anymore. Speaking of SNAP benefits, though, um, this, 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 this is, this is funny, actually. Uh, Congressman's misuse of Bible verse belies bad theology and ideology on food stamps. Um, as the House Agricultural Committee convened earlier this week to discuss uh, cuts for the Supplemental Nutritional Assistance Program, also known as SNAP and formerly known as Food Stamps. They're talking about slashing $4.1 billion from it. Um, but the funny part, here, the, here's the kicker. This is from uh, Representative Stephen Fincher, a Republican from Tennessee, um, who took issue with the fact that some Democrats were citing Jesus Christ's uh, call to care for the least of these when des uh, describing the government's need to assist the hungry. Which, if you guys know your Bible, yeah, Jesus, Jesus actually did say, you know, feed the hungry and the poor. Um, anyway, instead, Fincher explained that his support for the proposed cuts by quoting a very different Bible verse, which was Second Thessalonians 3.10, um, for even when we were with you, we gave you this command. Anyone unwilling to work should not eat. Here's the kicker, though. While the use of Second Thessalonians is a convenient tool for those who want to justify ignoring the poor and the hungry and, and the starving, uh, Fincher's lukewarm biblical argument actually doesn't hold up when put under scrutiny. As many religious bloggers have already like started pointing out and slamming this guy, uh, the author... Of Second Thessalonians was actually referring to ancient Christians who had stopped working in anticipation of Jesus's second coming. The verse is concerned with correcting a theological misunderstanding, i.e. don't just wait around for Jesus but live in active faith, not passing judgment on the poor. Um, worse still, Fincher's use of the Bible to defend the slashing of food stamps isn't just bad theology but it's also bad policy. Here's the real kicker because I, I really love I love things like this. Um, undergirding uh, Fincher's sloppy crap mess that he's spewing um, is the it, there, there's this whole concept with with some of these Republican lawmakers that um, people who are on food stamps are lazy parasites who mooch off the government and refuse to work. When in actuality, 
most of the country's 47 million uh, food stamp recipients are actually children or the elderly, and many are employed. Um, it, the 2012 report from the USDA actually found that 45% of SNAP recipients were under the age of 18, um, and nearly 9% were age 60 or older, and more than 40% lived in household with earnings. Now, on this, this particular topic, we're talking about 8.9 million people that are working poor. Okay, these are the people who work part time, full time, um, and they're working for these booming industries, but they're only making seven dollars and twenty five cents an hour if they're lucky. Um, if you really actually calculate that out, taxes and everything, it ends up being only fifteen thousand dollars a year. Which, if you think about it, the federal poverty threshold is twenty three thousand five hundred and fifty dollars a year for a family of four. So fifteen thousand dollars a year is so far below the freaking poverty threshold that it's ridiculous and these people want to take away that one thing that is helping these people survive um little known fact walmart's handbooks if you guys either work for walmart or uh, have worked for walmart like i have um if you actually look through their handbook it actually tells you how to apply for medicaid and food stamps because you don't make enough when you're working there as a regular employee. Um, I've been on food stamps, I've been on Medicaid, and I was also a full-time college student and trying to find work. So food stamps and Medicaid help a lot of people and now we have people like Mr. Fincher here who's gone completely freaking retarded and thinks that there's a bunch of people out there that are mooching off the system. Now granted, there probably are some people mooching off the system, but to sit there and, and apply that to the entire 8.9 million working poor that are in this country, it's a, it's a little steep for me. Um, I'm going to actually save some of the... Uh, the witchy news that I have for the very end. Some really interesting stuff though. Chamomile tea apparently helps fight cancer. Um, the tea contains a chemical which actually can halt the spread of cancer cells. And parsley and celery are also included in this for the most abundant sources of this chemical. Um, and it's, it's actually found in many fruits and vegetables common in the Mediterranean diet as well. So I thought that was really interesting. You guys should definitely check that out. Um, Reddit users attempt to actually shame some somebody and actually end up getting schooled. I'm not going to spoil that one. You guys got to go read that one for yourself. Remember, links are in the description. Some sad news. GMO labeling bill got voted down in the Senate. Um, to, by 71 to 27. Uh, Senator Bernie Sanders, one of my favorite senators, said the concept we're talking about today is a fairly common sense and non-radical idea. Uh, the whole the whole thing, this this bill that they they were talking about, it wouldn't have required the labeling of genetically modified organisms, but merely it would have have given that control over to the states. And the states could decide whether or not they want to require that type of la labeling. Um, Bernie Sanders also was a sponsor of the amendment and actually stated um, all over the world in the European Union and many other countries around the world, dozens and dozens of countries, people are able to look at the food they are buying and determine through labeling whether or not that product contains genetically modified organisms. And the interesting part is, is that GMO crops have been banned, burned, ripped apart, labeled, you know, all over the world. Monsanto's GMO crops are not allowed in uh, places like India, Hungary, and even some countries in South America. So keep that one in mind. Um, Scotty Walker got arrested for exposing the Sandy Hook 
uh, hook truth. Now, I don't normally follow these types of things. I think they're kind of stupid, but this guy actually got arrested for his activities in exposing the truth behind the Sandy Hook event. Uh, Jonathan is actually a 22-year-old who goes by Scott or Scotty Walker here on YouTube. Um, and he's taking the fall for the Sandy Hook truth. His bond was actually set at $50,000 and his court date is June 5th in Connecticut. Um, he's actually done nothing unconstitutional. They're actually saying that this poor guy is like, he's called up a bunch of people and was threatening or, or whatever, but the interesting part is he's actually recorded all these conversations and the, the conversation specifically that they're trying to get him for, the guy never actually like threatened um, the person that he was talking to. More specifically, um, I'll just read you a little excerpt here. Uh, some of you may recall his video wherein he disguised his voice and called the office of Wayne Carver, medical examiner. He made the call to ask questions based on the fact that Carver was involved in a cover-up. Carver assisted in passing a law one year before the Sandy Hook event, sealing all future pediatric homicide reports from the public. Um, this, in effect, allows his office to distort records or even fake deaths. The call was also made to ask why Noah Posner's mother stated that Noah was not autopsied on her request, but Carver said that he did autopsy Noah. At no point did, the, did Jonathan actually threaten Carver with any personal injury. He only spoke with the secretary and he simply let her know that people were aware there was a cover-up in lies being told by Carver's administration. As Vance said, anyone who contacts the people of Newton will be arrested. It has happened to Jonathan and they, they really want um, everybody to kind of spread the message to the entire research community. Um, this, the group feels that Jonathan's charges should be cleared. So, something interesting. Um, something a little more terrifying, considering that I'm getting ready to move over to Arkansas. In Alabama, there's a mystery illness who, that has actually hospitalized five people and has killed two. Um, they do not know what, what's causing it. They're hoping to have some sort of preliminary testing that, that, that'll give them a basic idea of what they think they might be dealing with, uh, either by today or tomorrow. Um, the people that have contracted this have been hospitalized with fever, cough, and shortness of breath, and of course, two people unfortunately died. Um, apparently, the CDC is, referred, is referring all questions to the Alabama health officials. Woo. All right, now here's some really interesting stuff. Best natural painkillers. There's all kinds of natural remedies, of course, that we can do um, to treat all kinds of different things. This more specifically is for pain. Ginger is actually really good for muscle pain. Apple cider vinegar is really good for heartburn. Clove, which I've actually used in the past. Um, for toothaches. Really awesome. Garlic is actually really good for earaches. Cherries are good for headaches and joint pain. And fish is actually good for stomach pain. There's um, a lot of other additional little things that uh, you should definitely check out that, that's on here. Um, it's the 13 foods that fight pain. And it's, it's awesome. It, it really is to see so many different foods that we actually will probably ingest at some point or another can actually really um, really helps like grapes are good for back pain salts good for foot pain um, pineapple is apparently really good for digestive upsets uh, peppermint's good for muscle pain peppermint is also good for nausea and stomach upset and the cool part is, is this is killing pain naturally you know, literally, the, go to your local farm, guys, and, and start eating healthy because it, it does wonders for the body. Um, I think I'm going to need another sip of coffee before I start talking about this next article. These next two articles are concerning 
uh, witchcraft. So if you don't like it, I don't know why you're on my cha my channel anyway. Um, because I'm I've I've been trying to incorporate witchy news whenever I possibly can. But uh, it's 2013 and they're burning witches in Papua New Guinea. There's a bunch of people over there that are still actually um, so convinced that all witches are evil that they actually go around and they torture women. Um, a lot of the times it's it's a vendetta. Women have actually been um, hunted. They've had hot irons lashed at them, uh, pressed up against their genitals to the point where there was there's no way to to fix it. Um, there's scarring across their chests, their stomachs, their backs. Uh, some some women have even lost limbs. Um, there was one woman in the article named Rasta who uh, was accused of sorcery by people in her, in her village after the death of a young man in 2003. Uh, and then she was set upon by a crowd at his funeral, beaten and strangled until she escaped. Uh, she ended up losing her, her hand and part of her finger on the other hand. Um, and this, this is common over there. The, the problem is, is that there's, there's not a whole lot that can be done about this. Because it's only fairly recently that Papua New Guinea has actually um, gotten any kind of connection to the outside world. And a lot of the people there are still living in poverty. Despite the fact that there is a huge mining boom that's going on. Um, this, this was a very moving and very touching article. Um, and you guys are going to have to read this one for yourself because this is very eye-opening. And although here in, here in um, the United States where religious freedom and even freedom from religion um, it is kind of a granted thing, there are some places that are out there that just, if you don't follow uh, specific things, then off with your head, more or less. And it's terrible. Um, something that's a little more funny. Uh, Wikipedia, we all know, is not actually a very reliable uh, research source. Because it's actually, the stuff is actually uh, compiled by various different people. And you know, the, the information can be edited and it's, it's not the best. However, um, there's, <laughs> Wikipedia actually admitted that uh, one of its editors has actually been conducting a campaign to purge the encyclopedia of all references to the occult and modern pagans. Uh, QWERTY is what the guy's editor name was. Um, and he really had a personal grudge against Jeff Rosenbaum, uh, who was the co-founder of the Starwood Festival and created many of the pagan theme pages under the moniker of Rosen Comet. Um, QWERTY had a habit of labeling people wiki spammers. And, um... <laughs> Yeah, uh, one of one of Qwerty's notes um, on Italian witchcraft actually said that anyone who followed this path was mentally ill, delusional people who are worshiping Satan with their dead Roman or Neapolitan uh, ancestors. Yeah, this guy, this guy here, literally went on a straight up revenge thing, um, and just like. They, they don't know how much damage this guy actually did. They do know that he's done more than 13,000 different edits, though. Um, and it was either to pursue revenge against someone or to protect his own page. Uh, his favorite tool was actually using a small army of sock puppets to support him in his various purges. Um, the only thing that I can agree with this guy on is that Wikipedia is not truth. Um... Uh, 
And it, the thing is, though, is that regardless of if this guy actually like had a serious vendetta or not against somebody, going onto the internet and doing something like this is just, it's stupid. It really is. It's no different than trolls coming on to my YouTube channel and sitting there yapping their flaps, talking about, oh, you're fat, and oh, you're you're retarded, you're delusional, you're mentally ill. You know what? I'm actually very healthy. Um, and I really don't take the time to really indulge trolls anymore. Um, year or two ago, yeah. Yeah, I used to. I don't anymore. Most of the time I delete their comment and kick them off my channel. Let that be a forewarning. Um, the other thing, too, because of uh, some recent developments that have been going on with my one of my, my many pages that I watch. Um, guys, I, I want you to understand this, and I want you to understand it very clearly. I do not make you people watch my videos at all. I may recommend videos, I may recommend articles, I may rec put down links, whatever. But it's your choice whether or not you go and visit it. Um, I am so sick and tired of hearing that I'm interfering with somebody's teaching or I'm interfering with something and it's it's not my fault that these people are coming to me. Okay. I give the knowledge that I have to the best of my ability through means that are easy for me as well as easy for the other party involved. My videos are educational in nature. If that particular education does not suit you or suit the needs of whatever subject it may be that you're teaching, then don't visit my channel. It is a personal choice to come here. Okay? If you don't like it, there's a little X button in the corner over that way or wherever you, you know where the X button is close out the damn thing okay either that or go visit some some other channel I don't care you know what I have a very nice dedicated following to my videos and screw anybody else that doesn't like that that's all I have to say anyway I hope you all have enjoyed another episode drinking coffee with me um, Remember, if you have any articles, whether they're weird, creepy, freaky, out-of-this-world kind of thing, um, by all means, please send them to me. I will definitely look them over, and you never know. They might pop up in a, in a video one day. Um, also, as another heads up, as it, as it progresses to that time where I'm about to move, um, I will give you guys more information as to where I will be moving to other than just the Arkansas area um, and you once I do move you will actually start seeing somebody else with me in the videos other than the cat um, <laughs> my witch sister I'm very pleased to say um, me and her are actually going to be doing a lot of educational Wiccan based videos for this channel and most likely for other channels as well uh, that we are planning on trying to get up and going. So stay tuned and remember love is all around you. Have a blessed day.